Welcome back everyone, today I will be showing you how to make dibenzyl acetone. Why are we making this strange chemical? Well, it has been used to block UV rays and sunscreen and therefore I decided that it was an interesting compound. This preparation was a success, but I was very sloppy, spilled a lot of products and yeah, enjoy. To make this strange compound we will need 106 grams of benzaldehyde, 29 grams of acetone, 100 grams of sodium hydroxide, 900 milliliters of distilled water and 700 milliliters of ethanol. If we wanted to do a recrystallization, we would need more ethanol or ethyl acetate. A beaker was put on a scale, the scale was set to zero and we were ready to begin. The sodium hydroxide was weighed out first. As you can see, sodium hydroxide is a white powder, but as it is caustic, you should not touch it and I put on some gloves. A 2 liter beaker was used because it had the perfect size for today's preparation. Afterwards 900 grams of distilled water were added to the sodium hydroxide. You should normally do this the other way around because it could get hot and it could end up splashing, but if it did I would be able to deal with it. With this measuring cup we measured out 700 milliliters of ethanol and simply added it to the water sodium hydroxide mix. Without cleaning the measuring cup, we then weighed out 106 grams of benzaldehyde. I got mine from the laboratorium discounter and if you want to order from them while getting a 7% discount, make sure to use the discount code shown on the screen. We added 29 grams of acetone to the benzaldehyde. The cup was swirled around to get them to mix up. Under stirring we added about half of the mix to the sodium hydroxide solution. Keep in mind that all of this is done at room temperature and you should not heat it up. After about a minute of stirring, the color rapidly changed to white and later on to yellow, meaning that the reaction was working. We stood for 15 minutes after adding the first batch of the benzaldehyde acetone mixture. We then added the rest and stirred for another 30 minutes. The type of reaction taking place is a base catalyzed aldol condensation. In our case, two molecules of benzaldehyde react with one molecule of acetone to form one molecule of dibenzyl acetone. Dibenzyl acetone is poorly soluble in the mixture of water and ethanol and therefore crashes out after being produced. I initially wanted to do a vacuum filtration using this big boy, but unfortunately I don't have any filter papers for it, so we will have to do a gravity filtration instead. In the end, not all of the product wanted to go into the filter paper, so I even ended up using a piece of cloth to filter the rest. The product was rinsed using a lot of distilled water. We did this to rinse out leftover sodium hydroxide, but the product should already be decently pure. We are going to do a recrystallization anyways because it looks like a lot of products but it actually isn't. We want nicer crystals that look better and are purer. The product was scraped into a plastic tray which was put into my vacuum desiccator over an hydrous calcium chloride. The tray flipped over and I lost about 20 grams of product but three days later we were left with this dry powder. In order to purify this, we are going to recrystallize from 96% ethanol. I would have needed a much larger beaker to do a perfect recrystallization, but what I did still managed to purify the product a little. The ethanol was brought to a boil, even more ethanol was added and I even put a flask full of water on top of the beaker to limit evaporation. I can't even call what we are doing a recrystallization. A recrystallization would be if I used so much solvent that everything dissolved, followed by letting the product crash out. After cooling back down, the product still looked much cleaner because a lot of contaminants had dissolved into the ethanol. Most of the ethanol was decanted off and then we did a gravity filtration. The product was then scraped into a clean plastic tray which was allowed to stand in a room until the product was completely dry. It took about 3 days until it looked like this, a white fluffy powder. It was then quickly scraped into a pre-weight bottle in order to determine the yield. In the end we were left with 99 grams of product which corresponds to a yield of about 85%. And there you have it, have a closer look at our products. We have this off-white and slightly yellow powder. I wouldn't make this chemical if I didn't at least smell it, so let's give it a smell test. Smells a little bit like benzoin, which I made previously, but it does not have the faint benzaldehyde smell anymore. It smelled like benzaldehyde before recrystallizing, but I guess the recrystallization got rid of that problem. Because this chemical blocks UV rays, it has been used in sunscreen in the past, but it's not being used anymore because there are better alternatives that are more healthy and even cheaper. What are we going to do with this product? 
I want to do a small scale bromination with some of it and I'm also considering to reduce the aldehyde to an alcohol even if this alcohol wouldn't have any great use. But most importantly I burned all of the solvent waste before continuing. It made this very nice yellow sodium flame. In order to brominate the double bonds I added some hexane to at least dissolve some of the product and later on we added a small amount of elemental bromine. Not all of the product dissolved in the hexane but it still worked. The only goal was to test for double bonds and not to make any pure reagents. But why did I use bromine and not bromine water? Well bromine is more toxic and therefore I prefer to use it. The test tube was shaken and heated slightly until the color of the bromine disappeared. Not any bromine evaporated off so it indeed reacted with the double bonds. 